This video is brought to you by my awesome sponsors. Make sure to check out the affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for all the support. Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and this holiday season, please do not buy Need for Speed Unbound yet. So today I decided to do a little bit of a rant video, call it, where I discuss uh, my skepticism and my um, criticalness of Need for Speed Unbound. And hopefully I'm able to discuss my feelings accurately and descriptively enough while being able to uh, engage in some high-speed racing at the same time. So we'll see how that works. So, in regards to Need for Speed Unbound, uh, point reason number one, it appears, for all intents and purposes, to be a poor attempt at a reskin of Need for Speed Heat. Now, on the surface, that actually isn't a bad idea, because Need for Speed Heat, to be completely honest, in my mind, is actually a phenomenal game. Uh, as a little bit of a backstory, during the 2010s, really the only Need for Speed game that I had really played was like Need for Speed Hot Pursuit from 2010 and then Need for Speed Most Wanted from 2012. You know, Rivals in 2013 didn't really say, seem great. Uh, Need for Speed in 2015 didn't seem great as well uh, with a lot of cringy cutscenes and that kind of stuff. And Payback seems like a better attempt and i'm actually playing through it now and it's actually a lot better it's a little bit more underrated than one what i was giving it uh credit for to be honest um but when need for speed heat was announced it looked like a combination of pro street during the day and carbon at night and i was completely blown away by that concept i'm like well this is, seems great so unbound there was a solid three years where we had absolutely zero information about if even Need for Speed was going to be a continuing franchise after Heat uh, with the um, dissolving of Ghost Games. Um, but then it seems like Criterion, Criterion was stepping in after you know, EA had a you know reorganization of the companies. Um, I was like, alright, fine. They made Hot Pursuit and they made a couple of other games in the past of the Need for Speed franchise, so it's like, I'm all right. I'm all right with them. They make great games, so I have don't, I don't have any issues with that. Um, and then they were pulled to work on Battlefield 2042, which delayed the game even longer than it needed to be. All during that time, we're sitting here as fans with zero information. The only time we ever got anything was a leak in 2020 about like a new Need for Speed game in development with that gave us absolutely no information whatsoever. And the only reason why we figured out that EA was even going to release a new Need for Speed game was during a earnings call where it said that Need for Speed, whatever the game would be, would be released during Q4 of 2022, I think was the uh, terminology that was being stated there. So the issues that I have with a reskinned heat is that EA has been holding the carrot out in front of us, the fans, for three years with no information, and they give us a basic half attempt at a reskinned game of a game that we already own, and you can buy for three dollars pretty consistently on Steam. So like why would we buy a seventy dollar game? when we can buy the same thing in essence for three bucks point number two and in some ways kind of ties into point number one a little bit uh point number two is that uh ea's marketing for need for speed has been non-existent at worst and poor at best so when when we heard that you know ea wasn't bringing need for speed to like any of the conferences in like late August, we already knew that some red flags were going off there because, you know, it takes, according to them, about two months or thereabouts of active marketing 
prior to games to release to really hype people up. So, you know, we'd hear about a reveal trailer in late August and the marketing campaigns would really spice things up or get hit the ground running in like September and October for a November release. Fine. So we went through like all of August with nothing. All of September with nothing. And then we started hearing that the game was being delayed. You know, fortunately only by a month or thereabouts, but really not not great. Not great news in general. So then finally in October, we finally get a release trailer. And from there, like, the marketing has been heavily edited videos with zero gameplay. Blog posts with very few screenshots. And most of the marketing has been in regards to screenshots of all sorts of clothing and brands and then like affil almost feels like affiliate deals with all these other like sponsorship companies like okay ASAP Rocky cool I like that idea he's got a sweet car including some exclusive music that he hasn't released yet cool um but all the clothing brand stuff like I get that they're going in the hip hop direction that's honestly I actually kind of like it it's a change of pace uh, including real, real world brands in customizable characters. I don't know why it hasn't really been done a whole lot before. And to be honest, if you make it microtransaction wise, it's a huge cash cow for EA because people would want to buy the latest Versace, whatever. And, you know, fine. That's cool. I actually kind of like the anime elements here and there, but like the anime elements on the cars and whatnot. Seems a little bit over the top. Anyway, I'm, I'm missing the point. The marketing in general has shown like zero gameplay of the game in general. And finally, just this last Monday, uh, November 21st, we got a unedited gameplay trailer, which was still in some ways edited. But the individual driving the car didn't do a really good job of like showing off the brand new mechanics that Criterion has been shouting from the rooftops that they've completely overhauled the game which by the looks of it they haven't and if they actually have it looks like that it's made it worse um and part of you know the whole new stylization and everything is that the cars just look slow, and the car being driven was an A-class, so you only have S-tier above it, and, like, at 150 miles an hour, it looks like you're going 80, and it just... I'm very concerned, is what I'm trying to say. So the fact that you weren't forthright in saying that you yourselves are delaying the game until, you know, you just ineffably dropped a revealed trailer, like, two months late and it's just it's a racing game and we've had more marketing towards the clothing and the music involved than the actual racing which does not spell for good things in my mind point number three is also very disappointing in that even the, I don't even want to know even though that they delayed the game, the very little bit of information we've gotten from the blog posts, which has normally been a bunch of buzzwords and, you know, vague information at best, um, the few little tidbits that we have gotten is that even though the game was delayed, it looks like that wasn't delayed enough. Because even if it was a reskin Need for Speed Heat, we'd still have servers with 32 players. We'd still have parties of 8 players and whatnot. Um, EA and Criterion made a point that they are developing the new Need for Speed game specifically for next-gen consoles. I think it's about time. You know, brand new consoles have been out for two some years. So it's about time that we start really pushing 
the boundaries of what these consoles can do and leaving the previous generations behind because you have these new consoles. But the graphics have been overhauled a little bit. So they look, in my mind, the environments look great. The cars look great. Fine. But reducing lobby sizes, or rather, like, servers, down to 16 players from 32, when you have games like all sorts of different Call of Duties and Battlefields that can get 64 people on the same server, I know I'm comparing apples to oranges, but this is with tech from last generation that you could do, by the sounds of it. And what really irks me is the fact that there's only four people available in your party going down from eight. So I can't play as, with as many friends as before and to be able to set up a full server full of people, it's just like, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense right now. But even worse is that the multiplayer as a whole looks like it's just really not going to be much at launch um because oh what is it here pink slips are not available at launch um cops are not available for multiplayer at launch and takeovers in the online uh area are also not available at launch so like there's Takeovers, from what I could tell, were going to be, like, the main staple of, like, why you play the online environment. So, takeovers just aren't going to be there. So, you're going to be able to do speed lists, which is fine, again, I guess. But to not even have a knight on top of it to really show off the beautiful world with lots of people roaming through it. And no cops to fight you off during the night. Or just in general, for that matter. So we're going to buy a $70 game with half the features missing, which is, and be, oh yeah, the other point being too, it's next generation consoles only. So they feel that they can charge $70 for a game that is obviously half finished. Cool. All right. So we finally found a lobby that has one other player on it. Nice. I mean, the timing of this video is weird as it is, but anyway. So, in all honesty, with everything all being said, EA took most of the developers from Criterion and put them on Battlefield 2042, took an entire year off of developing the next Need for Speed game for Battlefield to get a 5 out of 10 or IGN giving it a 7 out of 10, and that's even them being very generous with heavy bias from all sorts of fanboys and whatnot, being like, oh, it's a new Battlefield game. <sighs> so sorry if this sounds like a little bit of a rant, because it kind of is. But at this moment, I really highly would not recommend pre-ordering this game, you know, uh, Unbound. First of all, you just shouldn't ever pre-order a game. But even at launch, I really wouldn't even advise on buying Unbound. Uh, it's just it's just not worth it at the moment. Is I just don't see I don't see enough out of the game to really show that it's worth seventy dollars. Uh, in my mind, I would wait six months or a year. However, I'm hoping it'll be within six months because EA has a tendency to you know, like completely not update any game whatsoever after six months so hopefully within or by month six there will be an update which includes night racing online cops takeovers massive amounts of bug fixes which i imagine we'll see loads of them at launch still um and by that point because ea will be on to whatever the next thing is uh, you'll probably be able to do buy Unbound for pennies on the dollar. Like, it just it just makes sense. So I really hope that I'm wrong. I hope that Unbound is going to be a good game. I hope that EA have actually taken their time and made a bug-free game, and I hope they actually deliver the cut, 
content that they promised soon. Uh, because otherwise, I'm being the cynical critic that I am, they'll prove me right. And I don't want to lose Need for Speed because I've been a longtime fan since the third Need for Speed game from 98 when I was like two years old. So EA Criterion, prove me wrong. Proof Unbound is a worthy game because with the direction that you're taking it with like, you know, taking risks of having like hip hop artists and clothing brands and having anime elements, you guys show that you can, in fact, create really unique and take risks for your content of, of creating a new, unique game. Um, but I imagine EA is just going to be EA again. And we'll cut it. We'll cut the franchise in completely. So... For those, who, uh, th those of you who are still listening or watching or whatever, thank you for watching this video. Um, again, please do not buy Unbound yet. Um, I'll eventually probably play the game and I'll you know show it off to you guys. Um, but it just won't be now. It won't be for $70. So again, thanks all so much for watching. I uh, hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.